John Wadler is the head of Asian Bank Research at Mire Asset Securities right here in Hong Kong. Right, we've had some mixed reports. It does seem as though it's going through. But, you know, should they be selling at this price at a depressed market? I think the agriculture bank needs capital to keep growing and supporting the loan growth that they're uh, focusing on, right? So at a 7.6% tier one ratio, uh, they will need this IPL to be completed. We think that um, they will have to accept a lower price, um, but that's the only way forward in a very weak market condition okay. right now. Well, okay, there's a lower price, so they'll have to accept that. I think uh, what we're looking at a two and a half to 2.6 Chinese yuan a share, but looking at that, is that attractive? I don't think so. I think that's a little bit too overpriced. I think 2.35 renminbi per share is the right price for the IPO. Remember, CCB, ICBC, and Bocom in the A share market are trading at a 12 to 16 percent discount to the A share share price for those banks. So that depressed A share market is really going to be a factor that an A share investor will look at and really demand a lower discount price for ABC's IPO. So it's not going to be the biggest IPO in the world now? No, I think it'll be about 18 billion U.S. It's still a substantial amount of money. That's as big as HSBC's rights issue from a year ago. Uh, so it's a huge amount of capital being raised, and that's why they need to split it half in Hong Kong and half in China. Uh, what about another aspect? You can go through the financials and see why it could be attractive. But what about just the sheer scale of this bank as well and its depth and its width? Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's deposit base, retail deposit base is as big as ICBC's. Um, and its market cap will only be half. So it really does have some starting points which are strong in terms of foundation of deposits. Um, you know, that um, advantage will give it a very stable net interest margin of about 2.4%. But management hasn't proved its ability yet to manage um, growth. And I think that's where investors will still want to take a wait-and-see attitude in a very weak market. Uh, so it's fairly more of a traditional bank as well, isn't it, with many of its customers being rural? Yes, um, but that also means it's very sticky and stable deposit and customer base. So uh, I think if they can prove, and they have to do that over the next couple of years, that they can lend money in a more prudent and effective way, then uh, I do think that they can achieve reasonable profitability of about 0.9% ROA. You remember, most Western banks in the U.S. or Europe are lucky if they can get a 0.5% ROA. So, you know, the sort of long march of Asia's growth still favors Asian banks. It still does favor Chinese banks, but these are um, sort of difficult times, and uh, I think investors are going to want to be compensated for having to take a two- or three-year view rather than be uh, able to expect big returns in the short term. I like that, that long march thing that you use there. Uh, what about Chinese banks as a whole? They're going to be needing something like 300 billion yuan or renminbi here to you know, get things going with that. Um, well, capital is the big issue. Chinese banks grew loans between last year and this year so far about 13 trillion renminbi. But you've got these tougher financial guidelines. That's what they've got to adhere to as well, haven't yes. they? So, yeah, yeah, they need capital. Mm. Uh, they definitely need 60 or 70 billion of capital. Uh, that's about 20 to 25 percent of sector free float. So that's a huge overhang for the sector. That's why the share prices are so low right now for Chinese banks. They're at around seven, eight times PE. Is it factored into the price then, or do you think there's further downside? I think we're close to a bottom, but the key issue is there's a very few catalysts for the upside. John Waddle, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Mirai Securities there. Let's